uh, and thank you for joining us for this, I guess, last session, big session of today. Uh, today we are going to work on uh, this, uh, going to have a discussion panel on bioinformatics and big data for precision medicine. Yep, you can see uh, when I s first was given the task to moderate this uh, discussion panel, I actually had a little, I realized that I have a really big gaps in knowledge in different aspects which are concerning this subject. And I was very happy to see that uh, this panel is being joined by multiple knowledgeable people. I would like to introduce you. I will start from the left side. Lars Sikolskis from Riga Technical University. He is the head of HPC Center. Janis Klovinj from Biomedical Research and Study Center. Uh, he has a long lasting experience in genetic research uh, and uh, has done a lot of wor work on this field. Uh, Raymond Tuosis. Uh, he's the head of legal unit, unit at health management uh, health and health management lecturer group at Regan Stratnich University. Christian Mezanotte, he's a customer engineer from Google. And uh, Renate Strasdine, a uh, customer transformation and innovation for healthcare, life sciences, and EMEA at Microsoft. I mean, I'm really happy that we have some uh, representatives from all, also the companies, not just. Uh, Academia, thank you very much for joining us. Also, I hope that uh, Janek Metalisk is going to join us shortly. I guess he's still drinking a coffee because of this quite intense uh, schedule we're going on. It is quite difficult to catch the coffee on it. And then we have also one uh, additional member who is not going to, uh, let's say, participate per se, but he has sent us a presentation. And I hope he's going to give us some uh, uh, first introductory notes on the subject. So uh, let's hear what Alexander Smartinj Blooms, who is the counselor for research and space uh, and permanent, permanent, at permanent representation at the Republic of Latvia in the EU, uh, has to say about this subject. So guys, please start the video. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Alexander Blooms. Uh, I work in the Latvian permanent representation to the EU. Uh, covering research in space and uh, in my previous role I was at the Ministry of Education and Science uh, and I worked among other things on open science, research data management and also consolidating uh, the governance of shared IT services for higher education and research. I would like to begin by thanking very much the organizers for allowing me to participate in, uh, in this video format uh, and I'm very sad that I can't um, be there uh, in person uh, to participate in, in, in this panel. Uh, and I would also like uh, to thank the organizers for, for um, choosing this topic uh, for, this, um, for this panel discussion as it is extremely relevant uh, at the current time. A few years ago, uh, we in the Ministry of Education and Science began a push to promote open science. Uh, we began this by uh, creating a national open science strategy uh, which, among other things, aims to increase the impact and reuse of research data by creating policies, promoting best practices, uh, restructuring incentives, strengthening skills, and also building infrastructures and tools. One of the first challenges that we identified was a lack of good governance and poor quality of shared IT services uh, for higher education and research. So therefore, we looked at best practices around uh, the world and um, realized that we have to somehow centralize the governance of these IT services in a shared IT service center, um, which we decided to model on CSC in Finland. Uh, where we differ a bit with the, with the Finnish model is that in our case, this center is headed by uh, the four uh, research universities that we have in Latvia, um, and the ministry uh, has more of a supportive role uh, in this institution. But this institution will be a very key stakeholder in our ecosystem. Um, the Joint Services Center will uh, coordinate uh, research data infrastructures. For example, the late Latvian uh, Dataverse Network, um, which is an open source uh, uh, research data repository platform that we've uh, decided to roll out where in, in a model where individual research institutions can have their own 
research data repositories and then all the metadata from these repositories gets aggregated in a national portal. This Joint Services Center will also coordinate our integration into the European Open Science Cloud and there are plans that this organization would take over the genomics data network with the possibility that over time it would also take over the academic data network which is currently a project that's ongoing within the Ministry of Education and Science. This Joint Services Center will be a key interface for linking up sectoral data such as health data with the research community. For example, it could provide secure data environments, anonymization tools, etc. And if you, for example, look at the CSC in Finland, they have a wide-ranging portfolio of services targeted at health and biomedical research. I would also like to encourage everyone listening today who would be interested in collaborating with the Joint Services Center to get in touch because they will be scaling up very quickly over the next few months. The second topic I wanted to touch on is legislation. The European Commission has recently come out with a proposal for a health data space regulation which is currently being negotiated in the Council. This new regulation will cover the primary use of health data providing benefits such as patient access, patient data access from any member state. And there's currently a discussion on how much to cover the secondary use of health data. So my subjective opinion on this is that depending on how this file progresses, there still may be a need for supplemental legislation on the national level to create a fertile ecosystem around the secondary use of health data. And finally on funding, calls for proposals will soon be launched for the Innovative Health Initiative, which will cover a wide range of topics around digital health technologies, a screening platform for the prediction and prevention of diseases, among other topics. And also I would encourage anyone who may be interested to keep an eye out on the EU Mission on Cancer, which will have some opportunities early next year. So finally, traditionally we have measured success by how much funding we're able to attract to projects in Latvia. And I think we've progressed to a point where we need to be more selective about choosing what data infrastructures we build and what projects we are involved with. Since the limiting factor is less and less becoming funding and it's shifting more towards being limited by a lack of human resources, of talent who can actually deliver on these projects and create services that add value to the whole ecosystem. Additionally, we also need to look outward, not only to learn from best practices, but also to make our systems interoperable across borders, and also to use networks to attract the best talent that can help us create a better ecosystem. So once again, I would like to thank you very much for the opportunity to speak on this panel, and I wish everyone a very interesting discussion. Thank you. Yeah, I guess we have to thank, we can thank uh, Alexander uh, Blooms for his presentation. And uh, I guess let's move to the question answer session, right? So as I told, uh, when I was given this task, I realized that uh, there's much I, being from research field, there is much I don't know about the medical uh, field of medical medical field when it comes to big data analysis, management, uh, ethical issues which are connected with sharing the data with the private companies and between the hospitals and even uh, between the individuals. I mean, like individual with the ho com communicating with the hospital. So and. Uh, one thing that I realized that uh, all these uh, th questions that I had could be divided in four topics. Uh, I mean, the legislation questions, uh, what would, might be the role in our case, in Latvia case, because uh, precision medicine isn't, at least I believe so, well developed here, and uh, what would be the technical solutions for those that wish to engage, to participate in this market. And of course, the question about society, the role of digital and health literacy in this. 
So uh, the first question that I came to my mind are, is what are the ethical issues that are connected to acquisition sharing of personal data with service providers? I mean, uh, there are different levels. One of them is that you are uh, uh, outsourcing the sequencing and then the, this outsourcer is handling the data. The other one is that you're outsourcing, for example, the data analysis. And then the question is, are there any le ethical issues that should be uh, guidelines that should be followed within in these relationships? Uh, can anyone uh, give some answer to this question? Or Yanis, maybe? <laughs> or, uh... OK. So from, uh, for, from legal point, uh, of course, uh, all data which uh, which are used in the process of medical treatment should be used by consent. Mm -hmm. So, uh, on the other hand, of course, there is different ways how to get this consent. So, we should maybe discuss uh, further about the question how to get this consent, how it's hard in any case, or maybe there is some legal missing points, so maybe about that from practical view. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to add that actually, if you're talking about the personalized or precision medicine, it, it, it's really a broad umbrella. So there are many different cases that that, that covers. And I think for, for some cases where we uh, mostly are thinking about already well-determined uh, specific tests uh, that uh, apply to the specific p patients and they uh, in many times you don't need uh, big data or uh, at least not to gather the data from from any systems so in this case I think that uh, legislation is in place of course we don't know how will uh, this in vitro um, medical uh, device testing uh, regulation uh, when it when it comes into the force will we'll really operate with all the genetic tests for different purposes so and there's always a room for the improvement but there are definitely some uh, personalized or uh, precision medicine fields or areas that uh, are already well regulated so there are not not much needed for the improvement but of course mo most interesting uh, cases are where we're really thinking on the, on the pre precision medicine as uh, using the research data in, in, in decision taking or gathering the large um, medical data for the uh, different purposes and then of course there are more questions I guess than the answers how it can be treated legally and, and what are the all the all the technical uh, questions which we can maybe also step by step go into the discussion so we will use the same mic uh, all of us and we'll be sharing here but um, I would like to look at this from uh, from technical perspective a little bit but also uh, first of all, I would like to refer what uh, Professor Sklovin said about precision medicine, what do we mean by this? If you look just uh, very narrowly that this is uh, uh, how we are using genomic data to, to understand what is the best treatment, then it's uh, one story. If you look broader and we start with very personalized patient journey, then also the ethical issues are much broader than just using the data and getting consent. Maybe we, will, we can discuss this also later. But talking about um, the ethical issues related to data, because uh, this was, the, I think, the, the, the main focus of your question here, we also need to talk about uh, algorithms, machine learning algorithms that we are using for analysis, prediction, um, whether we are sure that there is no bias build in into into this algorithm so it's not only about getting data in the right way uh, in the ethical way but also how we are using and and how we develop the algorithm for this so uh, one thing that came to my mind is for example uh, about the ethics is the use case i mean there is a, a you need to do, for example, whole, whole genome sequencing to define one mutation for the patient. And then the question is, is it ethical to actually use this data to, to find something else? It probably would require probably patient's consent, right? 
And then at the same time, it wouldn't be, would be unethical to throw away this data. We have to keep this data because this is a health record, right? So uh, I guess uh, the point here is that all these things that we are managing with the data has to come with the patient's consent, right? So, yeah, that's good. But, but good. here for patient consent, I think we also need to make sure that uh, individuals understand and have book picture because maybe we are asking from them something where they do not have full knowledge and understanding what are the consequences or what are the opportunities so, so that or they how they can help others. So I think we need to talk also about So that they part. receive meaningful answers which cannot be treated in a wrong way and misunderstood, which means that you have to have also a medical personnel there standing there explaining the data, right? So. Yeah, this is a good suggestion, I guess. Uh, the next question that came to my mind is, uh, are there any legal requirements? Uh, I wrote there for the laboratories, but I didn't mean just the laboratories. I also meant uh, for the data analysis and uh, uh, software production, uh, so data analysis companies that wish to implement the precision medicine. I mean, one thing is just to sequence, the other one is to give you an answer. Are there any uh, legal requirements that they should probably follow. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if we have a good legal uh, framework for that in Latvia. Maybe, I don't know. Can you give some answer to that? Uh, we have legal framework, of course. It's common. It's not just for laboratories, so it's common for medical treatment. So it's the same way. Again, it is a constant from patient and uh, of course uh, if there is a constant about uh, further research is in a different kind of ways so there is it's allowed actually latvian legal system about constant about those other uh, other questions are based on the two main legal international documents it's one is a convention of biomedicine it's short name of this convention and and other one is gdpr which is uh, more modern but uh, uh, this convention of biomedicine it's i was looking it's made in uh, f uh, it was approved in the 1997 so it's still useful and uh, there the challenge is how to make this uh, receiving of consent more easily, practically, and useful, because uh, till this moment we have very big duty to receive this consent uh, to medical personnel. So, but the way how to improve it, to make it more maybe dig from digital, any kind of uh, remedies or programs or some kind of that. So, we already are using. Uh, e-health system where we will have uh, this constant about uh, from next year, I suppose, we'll have con uh, constant allowance to use your organs for transplantation. So we can develop in this way to make it easier, get this legal allowance. So. Uh, and, uh, Janis. Yeah, definitely. I think it's it's uh, the, this um, um, uh, the digital uh, possibility to really have this uh, is, is something that we can use. Uh, I think we have already started the discussion, for example, also to have this possibility uh, uh, for the people to really use the e-health also to um, uh, uh, really mark their consent to be part of the genome database uh, or, or a Latin biobank. So this would be also an, an one option. Uh, and of course, uh, the next step is uh, really to go for this uh, dynamic consent where when people are actually uh, have this possibility to really follow up their, uh, their, the, where, where, the, where the data are used in which kind of research and also a possibility to opt out from this 
to search if they want to. So the, I think this is all the things that are possible to integrate in the e-health and, and, uh, and this is the right way to go. Uh, however, of course, the, uh, the, this, this mainly concerns the research and so, but, 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 the, but the other direction is, uh, of course, to use these data for the medical purposes, uh, not either research data or, or the, something that is stored in medical system and I think then, then, it's, then it takes a, a little bit different turn. Uh, I think uh, one more aspect, which is maybe not legal aspect, but it is also about uh, data security of this data, which is gather. And uh, there is uh, also special certifications used for that. For example, ISO 27000 certification, which is important for data infrastructure providers. Uh, as far as I know, currently in Latvia, in academic sector, we don't have this certification for any entity. But do we have the certification for those service providers when it comes to, I don't know, sequencing service provision? It, it's, it's, it's in place, right? <laughs> they should have, yeah. Man, this is I, let's hope it is. But if it isn't, <laughs> this should be made as a, a mandatory, right? Uh, this actually also comes to my consideration that, uh, uh, I mean, these uh, big data analysis, they also require some kind of some standardization. But I haven't heard about the possibility to standardize, for example, next gen whole genome sequencing <laughs> to, to get it under the ESO. Uh, and do you know, is it possible to do anyone in the euro practice to getting ESO on a, or there are other ways how to manage the quality of the data and the, and the results that you receive? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I haven't investigated. And I, of course, uh, from my point of view, it, it's much easier to standardize the whole genome sequencing data than medical data, uh, knowing how, <laughs> how different they are, uh, especially in, 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 uh, in, 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 in Europe, where there are so different languages and so on. So I think it's um, for, the, for the whole sequencing data, there are existing standards, and then it's just a matter of, of approving them. I, I'm not sure how, what, what, what kind of level of, of certification there that there is at the moment but uh, but uh, but but uh, as I uh, as I just said the, the medical data and I think it is something that has been discussed uh, for, for for many years already in, and and it's far from uh, from understanding how how this can be standardized to, to the level that it's fully interoperable okay. yeah, Yannick, can you have a comment on this one I mean you had this nice speech about standardization and standards I, I agree that uh, technically standardizing how to communicate the sequence is, this is not a uh, difficult problem, uh, but, but, but it comes to data protection and, and uh, the, um, especially uh, integrity of the, of the sequence, then it, it comes to quality standards, of course, and the medical device regulation is, is, is a very important uh, component in Europe for, for this kind of uh, service providers. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I guess we have several takeaway messages. I guess guys from the ministry should probably look into the matters when it comes to legal, legal issues, how to standardize, and they should work with the, with the industry and with the hospitals to make, it, make sure that the patients receive what they wish to receive and that uh, data is interchangeable and interoperable and of high quality. So uh, the next... Uh, question that I came, of course, uh, in my mind was uh, technical solutions. I didn't know what you are going to answer. And uh, since we were focusing more, uh, my questions were more focused on, uh, on, on, on uh, uh, problems, uh, but I guess you already gave us some uh, technical solutions that will be required to overcome the variety of legal and ethical barriers. But I really enjoyed the, your previous comments and they came already with some suggestions. I, I guess we can skip this one or you have some... Maybe I can uh, add just quickly add that uh, in Estonia we are developing a genome uh, database for uh, uh, medical use. Mm -hmm. we, we used to have a biobank for, for research use but research use is, is different, regulated, and, and the data protection is differently organized. So now we, we are building the system for the, for the clinical use. And uh, basically the idea is to, is to create the marketplace for this um, 
precision uh, medicine algorithms, which can be then run in, in the protected environment where, where there is access to the genome data, but this can't, can't be uh, uh, like, um, consumed directly by the external uh, participants. Only, only this risk, result, risk level results can be communicated for the healthcare system uh, data exchange. That's basically what they're doing. Yes, yeah, I, I, I still want to answer the question uh, because I think we have enough, really, enough technical solutions um, and, and different types of, and we can, we can have all the possible combinations that are secure, that are doing pseudo anonymization and anonymization. Uh, what we need to be, make, make sure that we have real use cases where we are applying those solutions and then we will see whether we have any gaps in legislation or maybe even technical solutions. But if we are staying on this general level, then um, we cannot understand what exactly we need. Yeah, so I think we need to look from a use case perspective and then we will be able to assess whether we have any gaps. Because there are, but uh, we need to be more precise, I think. If I can add something, we also have some legal gray areas that need to be expanded and clarified in order for us to address the technical requirements. This is what I was asking, because uh, what I also felt is that uh, maybe some of those solutions that you just described should be also highlighted or out outlined within the legal system so that uh, everybody who wants to participate know what they have to do instead of, of innovating constantly something and then in the end somebody's coming and saying oh this is not going to work this is wrong <laughs> so this is what i was thinking this is what i was talking maybe this is something that we should as society and as a community especially here in latvia to work on so uh, the second topic I was thinking about is what should be the primary role of the companies uh, in provision of precision medicine and computation solutions? I mean, it's resource providers, software solution providers, or data analysts. I guess you guys should start this, the answering of this. Uh, yeah, I can start. Um, yeah, of course, uh, as you uh, listed here in the slide, um, um, cloud providers uh, should provide infrastructure, first of all, uh, but not only infrastructure, uh, it should provide solutions. Solutions that are designed exactly for the use case, uh, and in this case, for life science use cases. Um, so it's not just about uh, providing computing uh, memory network, but really understand uh, what are the needs of science and try to provide ad hoc solution for that. Um, of course, uh, in, uh, in precision medicine, the challenges are, are really great uh, when it comes to, for example, data life cycle. Um, so there are um, a lot of solutions that need to be provided to ensure data security, data privacy, data preservation, and so on. Uh, but yeah, the security aspect is something that will require uh, uh, a, a well uh, longer discussion. Um, I don't know if you want to add something. Yeah, um, I would like to again expand a little bit um, the, the private company scope because um, in order to make pri uh, precision medicine real, uh, we need to have more than just uh, IT companies or vendors there. So um, this is ecosystem play always. So um, we need to have pharma, we need to have med devices, we need of course IT. Um, so there are a lot of different private companies that, that will be there. And um, fully agree with, with my colleague uh, about uh, the, the infrastructure and, and solutions. And um, what we can see around the world that uh, infrastructure is the basic layer and I think it's the, the easiest to, to accept and, and, and uh, understand, okay, we are going into, uh, we need computing power, but the same importance or even more is about data infrastructure. So how we are making data connected. We also heard in the previous presentations a lot about uh, data connectivity. And then there is app layer or solutions where we are already 
creating, developing functionalities that are for specific case, uh, for specific need. And, and this cannot be done just by IT companies. So it's, a, it's a, again, I will repeat myself, so it's an ecosystem play here. Another important aspect, in my opinion, is uh, innovation. I think private companies and public organizations should collaborate uh, to achieve innovation more efficiently uh, and faster. So, uh, I was also curious, for example, there's the use case, there's the hospital, and um, they have lots of patients. So, they are usually trying to get as, as many different data to, to support the, the uh, treatment of the patient. And it might be involving also, I don't know, for example, this big data collection at the private companies. Should this data be coll afterwards collected at the hospital or, uh, or how, how we should treat that kind of a data there? I mean, the, the role of the company here is also a bit kind of a blurry, isn't it? Because, I mean, you can't just get rid of that data. Then again, you can't just give it away to whoever wants that, right? <laughs> so I will add one more, just to confuse everybody more. So we have, um, we as individuals are gathering a lot of uh, medical data and health-related data, and we are sharing them. So it's so it is actually more complex just hospital gathering data about the patient because anyway so patient will give a consent how to use those data and uh, I think this is regulated regarding the private company's role and storing data so again this should be regulated data will be anyway owned by the patient mm -hmm. and if they are stored it doesn't mean that private company owns the data and can do something with data Okay, oh, but I mean, this goes to the next question that I had in mind. Uh, uh, when it comes to these different clinical data management solutions, uh, which are, I mean, the data is typically acquired in a large amount when it comes to, well, I mean, I'm con con talking about data concerning bioinformatics, right? And, uh, and all these in extensive investigation, I mean, my understanding is that this should be something like e-health system right, that is central as in collecting this data so that, I mean, patients would, should, would be free to go to whichever medical institution he wants and the doctor who's working there would be able to provide best possible solutions for this patient considering all available data that has been collected over the time for him to, to walk, walk around, which includes also, I don't know, next generation sequencing data. For example, if the time comes and uh, Everybody is going to be sequenced just to make sure that there's one genetic test at the beginning of your life. Afterwards, you can dig do the digital genetic testing. And the question is, uh, what do you think, guys? Uh, should, I mean, such a repository be outsourced to the private companies or actually the state should actually uh, invest in these kind of things and uh, develop the repository that keeps these things? I mean, it's something like e-health, only more elaborate. D do you have any comments on this one? I have a comment. Uh, first of all, there's many kind of data and we need to start uh, distinguish and categorize uh, about the data that we're talking about. Uh, there's data that uh, might be stored on premise. There's data that might be stored uh, in a service provider, in a cloud provider. The point is, what are you going to do with this data? For example, there are advantages in keeping the data in cloud providers, assuming that the data is always on by the patient. Uh, if you need to analyze the data, if you need resources that are not available on-prem, then it's convenient to keep the data in a, in a cloud provider, for example. But if there are legal, legal requirements or compliance requirements, or for whatever reason the data cannot leave the hospital or the laboratory, uh, then the data should be on-prem. Uh, it's not much about you know, where the data should be, but what we should do with the data. Yeah, but uh, if it is located somewhere, then there's the, que the question about connectivity of this data. Because uh, if it is physically located at different places and maintained by different legal entities, or physical, uh, or, 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 uh, or physical entities anyways, but uh, then there's issue with the connectivity of this data. Some of it is going to be connected to uh, it's, uh, for example, if there's a doctor and he 
needs the data for the treatment of the patient, it won't be readily available. He even won't know that this data exists there. And patient might have already forgotten that he has done that kind of a test in, a, in the past because of different reasons. For me, this um, uh, IT infrastructure is very similar to um, uh, uh, some other services that we, we have privatized in our society. For example, mobile uh, service providers. So we used to have national telecoms, but now we, use, uh, we have a market of, of uh, telecoms. And, and uh, they also process very delicate uh, personal data. But we have regulated it in a way. We have created a market where there is a business case for the companies, there is regulations, there is enforcement, and, and uh, we have uh, managed uh, distributed the risk between different providers so we can choose uh, the best price and, and uh, we don't have to put all the eggs in the same basket. And I think with a, with a health data information exchange, it's, it can be similarly organized. So we, 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 can, uh, we can protect uh, the data uh, by different policies and enforce the policies and it's sometimes even easier to enforce if you have uh, if you can choose between different providers because you, you choose the, the ones who actually uh, adopt the policy if you just have a public comp uh, organization then you have no choice and and, and uh, how the enforcement will work then with the, with the public organization you have still the same data protection issues you have still still the the business case issues you have all all the same issues like with the companies but now you, you don't have choice anymore so, so that's my, my view. Yeah, and, and data, uh, health data always will be stored in different places. So we will not have one big source of health data for everyone. Uh, and of course, state will uh, regulate this. Uh, state will uh, define what are the standards, what are the um, collaboration uh, rules and, and how data can be connected. Uh, but uh, we, we cannot have uh, just one source of health data because there are public uh, players, uh, private players, and, and also we as individuals are holding data and we want to connect to those that, uh, for example, we have in a hospital. Yeah? So it's more about the regulation, how the collaboration is happening and what are the standards for, for data integration. You mentioned before data connectivity, as if the data is local, the doctor knows about the data. Uh, that's, that might not be the case. If you, you can keep the data local to a hospital, but at the same time, doctors don't know that the data is there and available. So those are two different problems. Uh, I reinforce what has been said. A collaboration is crucial here. It's not much important where the data is, but that the data is available to the person who needs to access the data. The data should be where it's more convenient to be stored. It could be on-prem, it could be a cloud provider, or it could be a third party. But it's important that there are policies and rules that make it clear who can access the data, when and what can access. You also had... Yeah, uh, I was thinking, yeah, that outsourcing data for me means also that uh, Data, data leaves country most often because Latvia is a small country. Uh, big uh, service providers who provide uh, uh, computing as service or storage as service, usually this data is not located in our country then. And uh, I think that some critical systems uh, for research, for medical uh, health uh, uh, should be inside country. They could be build these systems, of course, together with companies in collaboration. Mm -hmm. There is involved the academia and companies and government, but the, these systems should be, and this data should stay in country. Mm. Yeah, this is what I was also thinking. I, I think this is a good idea that data shouldn't be always located or maintained by the same legal entity. But again, there is you need that this government-made hub which connects this data together so that, I mean, I mean, when I was talking about doctors, you're totally right. Doctor doesn't know the data exists because patient has forgotten and he never know, knew about it. But then again, if there's, and he can't work with millions of the systems with different uh, data managers. He has to have one system where he can see if this data is already available somewhere with some of the providers. And if this provider is working with this country, but then this 
set of this legal within the these our legal boundaries he has to be connected to it right so it, it, there should be the system that is something like e health at the same time with the ability to connect and retrieve data from other service providers right in fact uh, we uh, talk a lot about data lakes which uh, basically are um, frameworks or architectures that uh, address this need can we work with several data lakes at the same time? I don't. Several data lakes from different. Pro I mean, this is also data lakes. Also, a solution provided no, they, by a specific entity. Yeah, it could be. There could be different data lakes, but data lakes by definition includes heterogeneous systems. You know, so yeah. you can have, you know, a, a data lake uh, where different organizations can access and can contribute. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, it was very useful, at least for me, definitely. <laughs> so, and um, oh, I was thinking, uh, since you are working with, uh, are from the uh, private companies, have you ever encountered some legal problems when you wanted to provide your services to, uh, to for the pr to, 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 uh, to implement some precision medicine procedures or something? Uh, do you know of those, or you haven't encountered those? Are there any legal problems that should be solved? I mean, this is the place where you can try to suggest somebody just correct this problem. <laughs> Maybe I can add the question just like, like, like imagine, imagine a case study, and it, it's not in Latvia, but let's say in, that Latvia would, would decide to, um, no, to take a, a decision that, for example, genomic data cannot cross borders. So, and then there, is, there are providers that can uh, provide different solutions for the uh, research for diagnostic purposes that requires, for example, cloud computing or, or, or uh, something like that. So, what what would be the solutions in such cases? Uh, so, I, am <laughs> I think um, in this case, as, as you uh, described just now, so there are a lot of uh, on-premise solutions. So, it means that uh, infrastructure is one particular place. And uh, there are hybrid solutions that, uh, that where data are stored in one particular place, never uh, leave the particular territory. Uh, but computing is done in cloud. In we have also right now, uh, already for some time, um, um, oh my God, <laughs> confidential compute. Um, and that ensures that uh, also computing uh, is, is done in a secure way, even in public cloud, but uh, it is, is secure. So there are a lot of different ways how those problems can be solved. There are, as, uh, there are, as colleagues said, gray areas where it's not clear which data and under what circumstances they can leave borders and, and be computed in a public cloud or stored. So I think th we are talking more about gray areas. When it's black or white, then there are either on-prem or hybrid uh, solutions. Uh, from my side, question uh, is that gray, gray area is in a local uh, legal regulation or it's m more with the GDPR? So, regulation. Yeah, um, I would say it's uh, it's not so much related to GDPR in this case. It's more about uh, uh, local legislation and interpretation. And also, there are we can you like on the EU level. Of course, there are also uh, um, regulations that that are in this. It's not black and white, so there is always interpretation. And then the question is how, on national level, uh, this interpretation looks like. The other problem is that there's a lot of fragmentation. Uh, each country has different legal requirements and laws, and that has to be taken into account uh, somehow, yeah. To, to include, uh, involve uh, private companies into this um, health data processing uh, 
uh, in Estonia we, we have this um, long, long uh, running uh, journey of, of getting the patient consent into the, some kind of registry that, uh, that uh, the public institutions could actually give access. According to the law, patient anyway has all the data, so patient could take the data and bring it to the private company, and that's anyway illegal. So we can't really protect patients in this, this case, but uh, then these big registries just t tell that they d don't have any mechanism to collect the, the consent and to, to export the data in such a way that the private company can use it. And then this is like endless, endless uh, waiting uh, for, for a better environment. So I think that here really the, the public uh, government should est uh, establish a platform and, and enable this kind of marketplace of companies. And it should be measurably um, inexpensive to join this marketplace and at the same time following all the policy rules like data protection and, and patient um, privacy and so on, different things. So, um, it, yeah, it should be in place. Yeah, thank you. This was very useful, I guess. As I said, for me, the, all of the things you're saying is useful. But um, uh, then we're going to the third topic, uh, technical solutions. I mean, uh, let's consider that uh, there is a, a company that provides bioinformatics related service and then there is the uh, hospital that uh, wishes to start to use this kind of a resource for their patient treatment. I mean, do you have any idea what technical requirements they need to follow? I don't know, for example, they need to have a broadband network, very developed uh, internal in infrastructure of, uh, oh, I don't know, wireless networks. I mean, I, I, I'm not a computer guy, so I don't have much of an idea, but maybe you can comment this one. If you want to join and use the bioinformatics uh, approach in your treat patient treatment, what, what do they have to do on, from technical aspect? Uh, yes, when it comes to technical requirements, we can have hundreds of them. So we need to start focusing on, on speci specific areas. There are technical requirements regarding network. There are technical requirements regarding data, data life cycle. There's technical requirements regarding communication and data sharing. Um, so maybe we want to restrict the conversation to a specific area because I mean, it's uh, a very general. I, I, I was just picturing myself as somebody who wants to start. Where, where do I start? <laughs> I mean, I haven't done this. I have no clue. Uh, I have billing. There are some cube computers there. They are working, and uh, I wish to engage this. What, 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 what should I do? I mean, I can just take in the people. Of course, I can start hiring people. But then they are going to come and say, "This is impossible to work here. This environment isn't." applicable for whatever we wish to achieve. So this, this was my question. Is, are there any something where you would to start with for these uh, entities that wish to engage the precision medicine in there? You know, uh, if, if this is really the very, very first step, uh, I think it would be important to understand and define um, what do you mean by, by this precision medicine? What this will mean in your particular hospital or, or, or uh, institution? And when it is clear, then you already can start to do your assessment on, on, on uh, a technical maturity. I will not even say requirements, but technical maturity where you are. Because uh, just one uh, anecdotal example from, from last month, um, I was discussing with uh, with one of the hospitals, not in not in Latvia, um, about uh, their uh, new patient engagement system that they they want to have, and it appeared that in one of their regional branches they do not have wireless that is stable. They do not have it; just it, it is not there, and of course this means that they are not mature enough to have this, uh, the, use this as a full, you know, uh, full speed. And uh, they can do this as a, like on a minimal level and then they can invest in the infrastructure and then make the next step. So I would not go into technical requirements uh, just as a first step, but when the scenario is clear, then go into maturity. So where you are with your uh, 
communication infrastructure, with your data infrastructure, with your user management, identity management, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Is there any standard that or more uh, uh, understandable way how to assess your technical maturity? Is, is there any I don't know, guideline or something like that? I think there are existing, um, I know we have and you have and other vendors have those uh, maturity assessments available also um, all the um, consulting companies and they are publicly available yeah. um, how to assess the, the maturity. So yes, we so have and I think so the first step is for these uh, participants to actually do the assessment of their maturity and then to draw the next yes. steps. Yes, so. I, I would suggest that if it's a very first step, then this is the right step. So, uh, any other comments, anyone? No? Yeah, I agree with what has already said. Yeah, and probably also decision what is to be done is, uh, uh, do you want to build your own data center? or outsource, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what we already discussed, yes. how you outsource. Do you outsource this to private company and maybe to some cloud provider or you outsource to some entity inside country as we are doing right now in some collaborations. And then you, of course, will need network mm -hmm. and high bandwidth network if you are sending genome files. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then we are going to this next question. I was curious. If, if we do, I mean, I'm going to rephrase this. If we do the maturity assessment of our country as such, uh, does any one of you, I know, Lauris, you do have some uh, comments on it? Do, do, do we have to do, I mean, we have some e-health e system, which isn't uh, working often very properly, but we know that we have one of the fastest uh, internet uh, connect. Uh, connections in, uh, in Europe. The internet is one of the fastest in Europe. But then again, uh, I, 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 how would you rate our country's infrastructure? If we wish to have this something where, uh, something like an e-health system that uh, uh, tries to combine and make as effective as possible all, of all the data that we are generating so that uh, you can really do the, some precision medicine, even in, in having all the, all, all the data and new data. How, do you have any comments on uh, how our country would be rated? I cannot assess every <laughs> aspect of yeah. infrastructure. For me, it's easier to speak about scientific and you know, research data infrastructure. And, and I would say that, yes, we can be proud of our networks inside country because in recent years, we, uh, it is upgraded. Uh, there was academic network, of course, which is uh, uh, already for six or more years, uh, but then there comes this uh, genomic data initiative where private companies helped uh, micro vehicles and also what with mobile telephones was involved to help build this uh, high speed network, which 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 gave us this opportunity now to share data inside country and also share data with other countries because we have, I think, in Baltics, one of the highest uh, connection speed to giant network, which is a European academic network. Yeah, We, we upgraded it to, uh, to 100 gigabits last year. That would be cool to use this uh, for, the, for the precision medicine approach. I mean, this would probably mean that oh, service providers have to connect to this network and to be part of this network, not just academia, but also service providers, because the infrastructure is there, right? Why, why not to use it? Maybe we can use that, what, which, which already is, there's enough probably space for academia and healthcare system within this uh, infrastructure. Maybe you have also some experience on this matter. So looking at the question and also hearing what, what Lauris just shared, so I think we have technical infrastructure. The question is, uh, uh, what what do we do with that? So, what are the data collaboration col collaboration cases? What are the use cases? So, how we are utilizing the infrastructure? And, and this is open question. I do not have an answer. So, what do we have on on data connectivity level? So, whether we have everything in in place? And I think this is uh, this is open question there. So, yeah, this I guess answers my. 
question that we don't have we have a good technical background but we probably don't have the uh, Jans has also a comment I think we, we, we very much concentrate here on IT IT matters uh, it's it, it's not the only technical thing that should be considered in a precision medicine I think if we are stepping back that of course the quality of the data quality of the of the of the and uh, also uh, really the uh, standardization of the data is something Something which is even more crucial before we even go to the uh, use of these data and looking at how you can 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 transfer them. And uh, of course, another thing is um, like like I think yesterday we have this example and a small discussion after the, uh, the one of the presentations here for to to, to bring to something uh, concrete. Uh, for example, whether we can use the data obtained in the in the research uh, setting like. Like, 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 if you uh, you've been genotyped and you would like to use it for the polygenic risk score calculations, and then of course the, the automatic question is uh, whether these can be used for some diagnostic uh, processes. What are the criteria, and then and, and all, all all this thing? And I can imagine that there is a differences between uh, different. Uh, uh, providers of service, uh, how these data are acquired. So there are a number of steps to really uh, consider before going to the to the real uh, IT sector and an analysis there. Yeah, I mean, this is what I also felt that uh, we have a good technical infrastructure, but then again, we don't have a very good idea what we want to do with it, how to connect it together. I mean, the health system is a really good start, but again, I, my guess is that this has to be expanded. The, the other players has to be allowed to join in and to provide the data so that uh, patients can benefit from it, in, including the research. I mean, the, all the knowledge should be also implemented there. And um, then there's the last question. I've been told that we have little time, so we want to touch the fourth topic, <laughs> which was suggested uh, as the last one. Um, if we are talking about this kind of collaboration, I mean, we don't have a plan. This is what I thought that we might up, come up to this. Uh, and we wish to create a plan on how to uh, create the environment and the system so that, I mean, it probably has to be regulated or on surface managed by the country as such, which allows, as you said, there's this market, the marketplace, which allows for the other uh, players to join in. Uh, I mean, but this would probably require creation of work group, which works on how this should be created. And the question is, um, uh, what format this work group should look like and uh, what, what people should it include, actually? How big should it be for, for us to develop a vision of, uh, of, of where, to, where to go? Do you have any comments on this one? In Estonia, the public insurance uh, started two years ago to uh, uh, give some funding to uh, these innovative projects. And, and so they, they issue some kind of funding round and then they select uh, like some, some scoring, based on some scoring, top three or four projects and they fund them from, for one, two years to see where, the, where it goes. And then, then if this uh, uh, funding ends, then it's like uh, you kill the project or you keep the project uh, in, in the system. And, and so it's, it, it, architecture can be also d designed this way. So you, you make some kind of like um, uh, funding round. Uh, idea competitions, right? Ideas, and, and then, then you let them test them and, and then you just, just choose one and go on with this. And then on the marketplace, the same way. It's sometimes for a startup very difficult to to get going, but, but when there is little support, this kind of uh, funding round, and then, then the marketplace slowly grows. So, any other comments? I guess, I guess this is a really good idea. I mean, one of the things is just to pick people and put them in together in one room, but the other thing is just let, let the wide ideas run wild and create it in a form of a pro practical application project where they can demonstrate by the end of the project what they have created. And uh, the, the reward would be extension of the project. If they don't show enough progress, you just kill it after a year or two, right? I, I think this is a very good approach uh, when it's clear where we are going. I think it's, it's important uh, before gathering everybody around the table, virtual table, uh, to have clarity. So what we are aiming for, 
Um, and again, this can be uh, most probably, and this should be decided in a, in a broader community, not only by, by public sector, but also like private, NGOs, academia. There should be discussion on, on, the, on the objective and then um, working into a very agile way and, and trying out new things uh, within the framework that is set up. You know, this is the way forward, but, but the aim and common goal that where everybody can see, okay, so this is something where I really want to contribute, I want to be part of this, I know what I'm doing. This is, I think, very, very first step. Mm -hmm. Now that sounds interesting and logical. I mean, you start with creating working group which defines the framework, and then you distribute, I don't know, but that's not development grants, not the research grants, and then you can see the prototypes, right? And then these prototypes can be one, the best one can be implemented and developed further. In this case, you can see the entity that has actually understood best and you can feel that this system works better than the other ones. And yeah, that's an interesting approach to this. Uh, so, Janis also wants to comment on this. I just want to mention that actually we are moving to that approach with the Ministry of Economics fund, which is actually now there is a, we are waiting for the results from the first round of tender for the for the applications, and this is exactly the the way you describe That's actually is how how it's how it's and and then um, at least in the area of bi biomedical research there are this this project that's strongly devoted to personalized medicine so and uh, let's hope it de develops yeah oh thank you everyone i guess our time is up right yeah it's the phones there so <laughs> uh, let's uh, have a round of applause for the experts so thank you very much for your contribution uh, any questions, you can ask them if the topic was interested, I guess. We have some few minutes afterwards to catch them before they get their coats and run away. Thank you.